The reading this morning recounts the events leading up to our Lord's triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. It's taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, commencing at the first verse and continuing up to verse 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, tell him, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. These are the words of the Lord. Well, thanks be to God. Thank you, Tim. Well, it's been an exhausting 12 months. Each one of us will have suffered loss at the hand of the pandemic. Some of us will have lost loved ones, others months of their life due to the illness. Still more have lost jobs and financial security. And more than we can fathom, will have lost all sense of self and purpose in their isolation and their loneliness. All of us have suffered loss of freedom, of closeness and of touch. The lockdown has been essential, but we recognise it's come at a cost. We have cried out, how long, Lord? We've fervently prayed. We've lit candles, set up WhatsApp groups, sent messages of encouragement, prepared meals, delivered shopping, looked out for each other and welcomed many new faces, albeit digital ones, into our community. It's been a mixed bag. And today, still under restrictions, we stand with palms and cloaks in hand as we await the arrival of King Jesus. We're standing in a space between sickness and healing, between repentance and forgiveness, waiting. The evil of disease and the corporate brokenness of humanity is all around us on every side. And yet, God's spirit has broken through. The plight of the oppressed, of the poor, the homeless, the excluded and the overlooked have all been drawn into sharp focus. The misdemeanors of governments and leaders have been exposed Systemic racism and sexism finally realised. Corruption and abuse are no longer being habitually overlooked. We are deafened by the sound 
and the awareness for the need for change. On the threshold, perhaps, of something new. Everywhere we look, there's a potential disease and unrest. There's recognisable tension in the air as we come out of this lockdown. And so we find ourselves in a position not unlike the throng following Jesus to the Mount of Olives on that first day of the last week. They would have been full of hope that Jesus, the Messiah, would bring an end to the unfairness and the oppression that they constantly lived under. Jerusalem would have been charged with tension, the small city filling up minute by minute with expectant Passover pilgrims who would have been set to swell its population of around 40,000 by six times or more. The Roman authorities would have been very nervous of revolt. The Jewish leaders would have been keen to keep order, to maintain that status quo that suited them so well. The man on the donkey, the prophecies of old, and the hope-filled chants of the powerless, poor and marginalised would need to be silenced. Change of the sort Jesus was talking about was too frightening, too challenging and too subversive. The voices of power and control would, for a time, crush and subdue. But Jesus, the dead man walking on a donkey, would keep on going. He walked into a week of extreme contrast. He walked into the temple courts where he challenged ordinary people doing ordinary things that had taken place for decades to allow people access to the religious sacrificial system. He walked into places of power and places of faith, bringing hope and wonder or confusion and anger as he went. He walked into encounters and questions from ordinary religious leaders and there were people of power and influence whom he challenged and enraged. He walked into disbelief from those who refused to see who he was and he walked through the repeated misunderstanding of what he came to do by those closest to him. He walked into a week where complete darkness would descend in the middle of the day. Where a deeply symbolic curtain would tear right down the middle by itself. Where the earth shook, rocks split and tombs opened. He walked into the physical pain of having to wear a, a crown of thorns, of being beaten repeatedly on the head with a staff, of having to carry, already weak and injured, a massive wooden cross through the streets. He endured the insertion of nails into his hands and feet and the torturous pain of death by crucifixion upon his whole body. He walked into the emotional pain of betrayal in Judas, of denial in Peter, of the desertion of his friends in the disciples, of false accusations at the hands of the Jewish leaders of being overpowered by Pilate and the Roman authorities, of the mocking and chance calling for his death, and the agonising emotional and spiritual pain of dereliction in his separation from God. And he said, Father, forgive them, 
for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus walked right through the greatest and worst aspects of human life towards the biggest act of self-sacrifice and love known to man on the week where death itself would be overturned and the world would be changed forever. This is the week that we stand before. A week of unknown emotional range. How does that feel? Every deed, good or bad, ever committed is wrapped up in this week. Every kind act, cruel thought, good intention, poor decision, every denial, betrayal, flippant criticism, unnecessary judgment, every selfish act, every false accusation, murder, mocking act of cruelty, torture and degradation, every shout of condemnation, cry of crucify him, crucify him, every act of self-sacrificial worship, every moment of forgiveness, of grace and of mercy, every act of self-sacrificial love, and every time someone hears Jesus call them by name. Everything we have ever done is in this week. The story of our salvation is drenched in supernatural power, sprinkled with cosmic earthquake and darkness, and it is intermingled with the ordinariness of our sinfulness and the disconnection that that causes within ourselves, in our relationships, and with God. It is in this week, through this journey to the cross, that the possibility of reconciliation comes into focus. When we begin to see who we are, what we are capable of, and what we've done, Jesus stretches between us and that relationship that we can never attain for ourselves, rightness with God. Jesus is the bridge between our brokenness and our holiness our unrighteousness and our righteousness, between our unbelief and our belief. He takes our depravity, our ignorance, our neglect, our cruelty, our betrayals, our denials, our hypocrisies, our fears, and he trades them for love for compassion, for mercy, for forgiveness, for freedom, and for life eternal. And he says, it is finished. So as we walk through this week, what will we take with us? Will we take being a servant to others as Jesus did? as he washed the feet of his disciples? Will we take continued care and concern for the plight of the oppressed, the weak, the overlooked and the lonely? Will we reach out and touch the untouchable? Will we challenge the voice of the oppressor, stand between the condemned and the condemner, Stand with the weak in places of power? Will we put our heads above the parapet without concern for the consequences, like the throng who follow Jesus into Jerusalem? Will we take the forgiveness Jesus offers and live in grace? Will we learn to forgive as we have been forgiven? 
Will we take the freedom from oppression that Jesus holds out to us? Will we believe that it is finished? All of it, that every bit, has been covered by Jesus. Will we take others with us, point to Jesus and show them the way? And what might we, might we leave behind? Will we leave behind our betrayals, both to ourselves and to others, as we walk through the Last Supper? Will we leave judgment, condemnation, unkindness, cruelty and neglect, neglect behind as Jesus bears them for us on the cross? Will we stop denying and start believing in the promises of hope and eternal life that faith in Jesus brings? Will we try to live out all of these things as we slowly walk through this week? Will we replace fear with trust? Will we allow ourselves to be transformed again by the knowledge of God's infinite love for us? Will we accept that we are his and live accordingly? At every step, this battle looks like it's going to the strong. The dead man walking into Jerusalem on a donkey, a parody to the powerful. When Jesus leads, all expectations are turned upside down. It's not coercion, power or threat that restores order, but love, self-sacrifice, self-emptying and suffering. It is this that reveals the endless futility of our way and points to the justice and goodness of God's way. Jesus offers himself to us as the way to salvation, freedom and life eternal. He takes all the brokenness, all the pain, all the dysfunction, all the abuse, all the pressure and all the fear upon himself in the most generous, selfless and loving transaction ever known to mankind. So as we stand here today, waiting, exhausted, weak, empty and battered from this last year, will we let Jesus Take us with him through this week so that his journey can become ours too. Amen.